the topic for today is HTML formatting, HTML tables, and HTML lists. So let's get started with the formatting first. When we are talking about HTML formatting, we are talking about the native elements which are native to HTML because we know that nowadays formatting is usually done using CSS. In this video, firstly, let's talk about the various formatting elements that we can still use in HTML and which are fairly popular. Before showing you or before making you understand this code, let's try to look at the output. If I run this particular file, what is the output that I get? Let's have a look. Okay, let me just zoom in. All right, I hope my screen is clearly visible to you and the output is also well understood. Let's try to map the output along with the code. As we can see, we are going to start off with, of course, the opening HTML tag. This is this is the opening HTML tag and this is the closing HTML tag. All my code will go between them. I have a head section for the title, which in this case is formatting elements. So the title appears here, as you can see, right here. Yeah, so if you place your cursor on top of the title, it appears as a tooltip. The title is formatting elements and we enclose it within the opening and closing title tags. Coming to the body section is where we are going to look at the various formatting options. The first option is bold text. As you can see, I have taken this particular line. This is bold text and I've enclosed it between the opening B tag and the closing B tag. This clearly denotes that we are looking for bold text, right? We are looking for bold text. We want the text to appear slightly in enhanced format, if I were to put it that way. And you can see the output. It's clearly shown here as we would normally find even in word processing software. Next is the strong tag between the opening strong tag, between the opening strong tag, which I've highlighted now, and the closing strong tag, which I've highlighted now, you have the line, this is important text. In the output as well, you find the same appearance as the bold text. The question arises, why use strong then? What is the difference between bold and strong? The answer is fairly simple. Whatever text on your website you feel is important, as far as the content is concerned, you would enclose them between the strong tags. When it comes to bold text, you're simply concerned about the format bold. But when you're looking for terms, you're looking for phrases, you're looking for sentences, lines, paragraphs, which you believe are important for people to understand, for search engines to understand, in order to index your website better, you would enclose them between the opening strong tag and the closing strong tag. As you can see here. One more thing. After the portion on bold, which I have currently highlighted, I have purposely included the line break. The line break will take me to the next line. Otherwise, otherwise, you would find if I had not given this particular line break, which I've highlighted, the next line, which is this is important text, it would appear on the same line as this is bold text. Now, this is something that I did not want. I want each and every formatting output to be on separate lines. That's why I have purposely inserted this line break at the end. If I do not insert the line break, I'll not get the output on different lines because by default, they'll not be inserting any lines for me. When I create a paragraph, by default, one line of space is inserted for me on my behalf by the browser. But when it comes to such formatting elements being used directly on text, no default lines or no default blank lines are inserted on my behalf or on the user's behalf. Next is the italic text. If I want text to be italicized, as I can see in my browser, this is italic text. All I do is I enclose them between the opening and closing i tags. If I want 
text to be emphasized, I enclose them between the opening and closing EM tags. Again, the appearance of italic and emphasized happens to be the same. What is the difference? The difference is, in emphasized text, whatever words or terms or sentences that we want, a text-to-speech browser or a text-to-speech application rather running on the browser to recognize, we would enclose them between the EM tags. At times, we humans, in order to make our point even more clear, what do we do? We emphasize on a particular word or we emphasize on a particular phrase. If we want a text-to-speech browser or rather a text-to-speech application which is running on a browser, to do the same for our text, we would enclose it between the EM tags. We want a particular word to be emphasized, we enclose them between the opening and closing EM tags. We want an entire line to be emphasized, we enclose the entire line between the opening and closing EM tags. As simple as that. Next comes the highlighting portion. Highlighting is achieved using mark. If I simply enclose this particular word Saturday within the opening and closing mark tags, I find that it is appearing in highlighted form. Right? As simple as that. And not only in a paragraph. So in this particular case, the part that I'm highlighting, I have enclosed a particular word in a paragraph between the opening mark tag and the closing mark tag. I can use the mark tag separately as well. So a particular acronym like Bachelor of Management Studies, if I enclose it between the opening mark tag and the closing mark tag, it appears highlighted as we can see on the browser. If we want text to appear in slightly smaller size as compared to the normal, we enclose the text between the opening and small between the opening and closing small tags, beg your pardon. So whenever we want the text to appear in slightly lower font than usual, all that we need to do is take the text, like here I've taken the text, this is smaller text, and enclose it between the opening small tag and the closing small tag. And the text, the output would appear slightly in a smaller font. As we can see here on the browser, this is smaller text appears in a smaller font. Next is, if we want the strike through feature, if we want the strike through feature, we can use the del element. Like here, I want to strike out this particular word green. All that I need to do is enclose the term green between the opening del tag and the closing del tag. And usually what we do is, we follow it up with another term or another number. Like here, I have crossed out green. And beside it, I have typed red. So it's like my favorite color used to be green, but now it's red. And oftentimes, whenever we use the strike through feature, the word that follows the strike through feature, in this case, red is following green. So the word that follows the strike through feature in this case is red. The word that is striked out is green, and the word that follows it is red. Oftentimes, we want this word which is followed to be underlined. In that case, we can use the opening and closing INS tags. So INS is short for insert, followed by the strike through feature implemented using Dell. I can follow it up with the INS tags, with the pair of INS tags to enclose my word red. As simple as that. Next comes the superscript option. If we want text to be elevated, this is most often seen in case of formulas, either mathematical or chemical. Like here we can see x squared or x raised to the power of 2. In that case, all that we need to do is enclose the digit 2 between the opening and closing SUP tag. So SUP is short for superscript. If I want something to appear in subscript, like H2O, the 2, the formula for water, if I want it to appear a slightly lower level, then all I need to do is enclose this two between the opening and closing sub tags and I'll get the result. So as you can see H2O. So these are the various formatting elements that we find in HTML that are native to HTML. 
Next, let's look at a few examples on lists. So let me just close this off. Let me bring it forward. Let me show the output of this. Ah, so this is the output. Let me zoom in a bit to make things absolutely clear. Let me open the code. Open with Notepad. Let's look at the output. Let's place it side by side. Right, much better. Here, we are looking at a list. List is mainly of two types, isn't it? We have bulleted lists where the order does not matter, as you can see on your screen here. And we have numbered lists where the order makes a difference. For example, if you have a menu card of a restaurant, for the seller, each and every item is equally important. So he would not number the items. Instead, he would be using bullet points. On the other hand, if we have to showcase the days of the week or months of the year, we would generally want a numbered list because the order matters there. Because Sunday comes before Monday, November comes before December. When we want to implement an unordered list or a bulleted list as it is often called, we have to use the UL element. Here, there's an attribute called type. I'm coming to it a bit later. For now, okay, let me remove this so that you can concentrate only on the tag. Let me save this and let me reload. Okay, no change as you can see. You'll understand why. Here, as always, we have the opening HTML tag and we have the closing HTML tag. So all the content goes in between. We have a head section where there's the title. The title is unordered lists. As you can see here, the title shows up unordered lists. Then we have the body section. I wanted a background color of orange. So I've gone with the attribute BG color for the body element. So whenever we want an attribute, we would place it in the opening tag. We would place the attribute in the opening tag. So I wanted a background color of orange. So I placed the BG color attribute in the opening tag of body. And I wanted an orange color. So I assigned it a value of orange within double quotes. Don't forget the double quotes for your attribute value. Now, once I'm done with my background color, the next thing is, the next thing that I've done here is I've gone for a level two heading with the term beverages offered straightforward as we had seen in our previous video. Finally, we have something called an unordered list. So we have the opening UL tag. UL is short for unordered list. And we have the closing UL tag. And enclosing the opening and closing, I mean, beg your pardon, between the opening and closing UL tags, we have the LI tags, the pair of LI tags. Now, how many list, how many beverages are being offered? There are four beverages being offered. That means we have four list items. For every list item, we'll be using a pair of LI tags. Opening LI tag, closing LI tag. What is the first list item that I want? Coffee, along with its price. So I have it here. The second list item is cold drink. So again, I enclose it between the opening LI tag and the closing LI tag. Same thing with green tea and same thing with mineral water. So these are my list items and each list item is enclosed between the opening and closing LI tags. The first thing that you need to decide when you're coming up with a list of any type, whether it be unordered list or ordered list, the first thing that you need to decide is how many list items are there. In this case, I have four list items. So I'll go with four pairs of LI tags, like you can see here, right? And the rest of it is in front of your screen. Oftentimes, it's a requirement that you may not want the bullet in this manner. You don't want it as filled disks. Maybe you want something else. In that case, you can go to the opening UL tag and use the type attribute. In the type attribute, if I type, if I assign a value of circle, let's see what happens. Save it and reload. Ah, can you see? So we have hollow circles now for, for our bullet points. We have hollow circles for our bullet points because I assigned the type attribute a value of circle. Fine. Another option that is available to us 
instead of circle is square if we want square bullets so once again if I reload there you go the square bullets are there for you and there is another option called disk which is the default if we save this and if we run it there you go we have disk now so filled circles or disk this is how we can implement various types of bullet points with our unordered list so I guess that sums up what an unordered list is of course there are variations but I believe that we can take it up in the next video because uh, this is getting a bit longer and may be overflowing for you as well so I'll stop here for now and I'll see you again in the next one if you have any doubts please feel free to leave them in the comment section below thank you